Good morning, eighth grade. It's Miss Salvatore. I just wanted to take a couple minutes to review the reading passage. Another one bites the dust and give everybody an opportunity to revisit, read along with me and review what theme is, how we identify theme in a passage and how, what is the difference in theme and main idea. We can find the theme and the main idea in many things besides reading passages. So think about something that you've watched on TV, a movie that you've watched, even a song. If you listen to it and you think about the lyrics, there usually is a theme and the main idea or the message that is being or trying to be portrayed in that song. So main idea theme happens across different things, whether we're reading a passage, a book, watching a movie, watching a TV show, or listening to music, okay? There's lots of different ways and places we can identify that. So let's just do a quick review of what the difference of theme and main idea is. And then we're going to read the passage. I will read the questions that are due and give you some sentence starters to uh, help you answer the open-ended constructive responses. And as always, if you need any help, please do not hesitate to reach out. I am more than happy to help you. So let's get started. All right, so let's take a look at theme and main idea. So since the very beginning of the school year, the main message or the goal that we have wanted you to be able to do when you are reading your plays, your passages, your novels, is to truly identify what the theme is and the main idea. So take a minute and see if you can come up with a definition of your own, put it in your own words. What is theme and main idea? What is the difference? And what does that mean truly to you? I'll give you a couple seconds and then we'll dive right into it to review. So theme versus main idea, okay? I'm just gonna review very quickly. The goal or objective is that this presentation, this mini lesson is going to show you the difference between the definition of theme and main idea. We can go over examples of theme and the theme and main idea of your passage. Another one bites the dust. So now that we have our goal, what is theme and what is main idea? Theme is the lesson of the story. It's what you take away from the story. It is the big idea. So when we're talking about the novel, The House on Mango Street, what was the takeaway, the life lesson, the big idea? And then your main idea is what the book is mostly about. It is a specific idea, okay? And we are going to practice that now as we read our article, Another One Bites the Dust. If anyone has any questions, now would be the time. Send me an email or in office hours or sometime when we are working together in a breakout room. If you are not clear, please do not hesitate to ask. But now we are going to practice to be able to tell what the theme, the big takeaway is, and then what the main idea of the passage, another one bites the dust. So let me pull up our passage. Okay, this is the article that you have access to on Canvas that was part of your assignments. The title is Another One Bites the Dust. If you've read it, great. It's not going to hurt you to hear it again. You can go back to this at any time, follow along with me, and then we are going to be able to identify the main idea and the theme in Another One Bites the Dust. I will highlight as I go along, so please follow along with me. Show and tell was a mandatory part of class when I was in fourth grade. I cannot even tell you how annoying it was. My house, when I was growing up, was a square box with small windows and yellow chipped paint. 
I wore clothing that my cousins had grown out of or that my mother bought at discount stores. I had a few toys, but nothing shiny or electronic. I never went on vacations except to Cincinnati and Harrisburg, Pennsylvania in one time. All of that is to say I never had anything fun for show and tell. So I used my, my turns to show off something I found while throwing rocks at cars from the train trestle, trestle near my house, which typically got me a look from the teacher and sometimes a phone call home. It would be different if I actually had something to show off, I'd tell my mom, after getting in trouble for bringing in a railroad tie. My classmates go places. They do things. They have stuff to show. Mom couldn't even really get mad at me when I said that. It was true. I couldn't compete with the things other kids brought in. So I just brought in something weird and talked about it in the most exciting way that I could. And I tried to ignore the giggles and snickers until my turn was over and I could sit down and forget about show and tell until next time. There was one time though, when I looked forward to show and tell. My class was in the middle of an otherwise boring unit on music and having disappointed the class by telling us we were not going to be allowed to play tubas or electric guitars as part of the lesson, my teacher decided to do something different to make up for the disappointment of triangles and plastic bongo drums. Okay, kids, for the next few days, I'm going to introduce a different kind of show and tell, she, she began. Instead of having one person talk about something important to them each week, I want every single one of you to get a chance to talk about, to talk over the next few days. So we'll have five or six of you share every day. However, the theme of the show and tells is music to match up with our current unit. So I know all of you listen to music and probably you all have a favorite band or song. What I'd like for you to do is think about your favorite song and bring it in to play for class. My teacher looked so pleased with herself. It was a good idea and I was pretty pleased too. A show and tell where I could measure up. I ran home that day excited about the idea of standing in front of my class the next morning and equal at last. All sorts of different people could like the same song. I whipped the front door open so hard it hit the wall in the foyer and bounced back. It almost hit me in the nose, but I caught it as I called out, Mom! And then I realized we did not own any music. Sure, we had a little radio, but since Mom was usually balancing her budget to be able to afford cans of chickpeas, we seldom spent money on CDs. I'll stop here for a second. Does anyone know or can you identify or someone at home have a CD? A CD, is, it stands for compact disc and that's how most of my middle school and high school was spent listening to music on CDs. I know, if you find one, I would love to uh, know about it. I knew of some bands from listening to the radio and I had a few favorites based on songs my neighborhood friend and I played from his family's collection. But mom and I did not own any music I could bring in for show and tell. So I sat on the bottom step to think about what to do next. My mind moved fast. Of course I could borrow some music from my friend. Without waiting for my mom to answer, I ran out the door. My friend sat next to me making suggestions. What about ABBA, he asked. Or what about the Beatles? Or we liked The Clash that one time. These are all bands from a while ago. Nah, nope, it has to be a favorite. I don't know if those are favorites. Then I came across The Game, an album my friend and I had listened to three times in a row while building forts and playing army. 
there was one song on the CD that was perfect. I've got it. I shook the CD above my head in triumph and helped clean up the mountain of music around me. Okay, kids, like I, like I explained yesterday, a few of you are going to present some show and tell songs today as part of our music unit. When it's your turn, you'll get to play your song and then we'll have a discussion about what makes it good, why we don't like it, and what instruments we think are making the sounds that we hear. My hand flew up first when my teacher asked who wanted to share. I practically strutted to the CD player at the front of the room. Okay, everyone, this is a song I heard at my neighbor's house. It's my favorite. I don't know exactly why it's my favorite, but it is really good and that's definitely part of it. I hit play. Boom, boom, boom. Another one bites the dust. Boom, boom, boom. My song played through. When I pressed play, I was smiling and I tapped my foot for the first three beats of the song. But then I noticed something. The looks on my classmates' faces weren't as excited as mine. They looked bored, confused, and then they were giggling. This is so old, someone whispered, but not quietly. Someone else laughed out loud. My parents listened to this. I stopped tapping my foot. My head got really hot and I knew I was blushing. My teacher told the class to hush, but it was too late. They'd already laughed. They'd already made it pretty clear that once again, I wasn't part of their in crowd. When my song finished, my teacher forced a discussion about it, but I was quiet for most of it. I was too embarrassed. For the rest of the day, I slumped at my desk, hating the fact that I had no music at home and the song I thought was cool was actually an antique. I had to figure out some way to get it, to get out of this trap. I was going to be known as the show and tell loser forever if I didn't do something about it. So on my way home, I made up my mind about two things. One, I was going to learn about music before anyone else knew about it. I was going to know, to know about the coolest bands, the newest sounds, and the best songs before anyone had a chance to make fun of me. The other was that I was going to pass on my turn at show and tell for the rest of my life. Hmm. So, the character in the story had to make a decision. This last sentence is very important. So, the character in the story has to make a decision. Were they going to never participate in show and tell for the rest of their lives? Or were they going to do something about it and really get to know their music and do some research and truly find out who they like and not just what they have? So there are several questions, I believe 10. Let's just go through them, yes. So what I would like you to do before I read the questions to you is for you to think about what is the main idea of this passage? What is it mostly about? Someone could summarize that for me. Tell me what this passage was about. So to me, it's about a student, the character. I don't know if it is a boy or a girl, because I'm um, trying to look and I just see, um, nope, I don't, I don't see a name and I don't see any pronouns that would tell me um, whether the, the character is a boy or a girl. However, I know that they are in fourth grade. They always feel left out, show and tell. Um, they don't have a lot of things to show and tell. They don't really travel many places, but they're trying to make the best of it. He or she likes the song, Another One Bites the Dust. And when they bring that in for the music lesson show and tell, the kids laugh and make fun that it's such an old song. And then at the end, the student has to make a decision. Are they going to never show and tell anything ever again? and be miserable and sad and feel defeated? Or are they going to use this as a learning opportunity to truly research and find out um, what they like 
Okay, so that would be a quick summary of the main idea, what the passage is mostly about. Now, who can tell me about the theme? The central message, the big idea. Might come back to a little bit of self-identity, like a lot of our novels and the plays that we've been reading, but I would really love to hear what your thoughts are. I will go through these questions um, I will spend some time on the constructed open end response at the very end, eight, nine, and 10, and give you some hints on how to start. And please make sure that you get this into Mr. Yoder. There is now no excuse for you not to, that there is a reread of this passage, a quick mini lesson to go over main idea and theme. And I will even help you start your written responses. So number one, according to the text, what was a mandatory part of class when the narrator was in fourth grade? Mandatory means it was a must. This has to do again with main idea, what it was mostly about when they had to bring it in. Was it A, physical education, B, show and tell, C, music time, D, silent reading? All of you should be able to get and answer that correctly. Number two, what is a main problem the narrator faces in this story? The narrator is the person telling the story. They keep using I, 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 we don't see she, he, um, or a name. So the narrator refers to themselves. What is the main problem? A, the narrator never has anything fun to bring in for show and tell. B, the narrator does not like his or her fourth grade teacher. C, the narrator can never pick just one thing to bring in for show and tell. D, the narrator always brings in the same thing as his or her classmates for show and tell. We can do some elimination here. Does it ever say that the narrator, the one telling the story does not like his or her fourth grade teacher? No, so we should be able to eliminate that. It is not B. Um, the narrator always brings in the same thing as his or her classmates for show and tell. We can make an inference and also have text evidence that says that uh, the narrator never feels like his classmates that he or she is in the in crowd. So we can eliminate D because the narrator always does not always bring in anything that is the same. It is always very different. So now you have two answers you should be able to choose. The narrator never does anything fun to bring in for show and tell, or the narrator ne can never pick just one thing to bring in for show and tell. Please make your choice. Read this number three, read this sentence from the text. So I used my turns to show off something I found while throwing rocks at cars from the train trestle near my house, which typically got me a look from the teacher and sometimes a phone call home. You need to go back to the passage. It's asking for evidence. Based on this evidence, what conclusion or inference can you draw or make about the teacher? After this, after this, this is in the text, what can you conclude? A, the teacher did not pay attention to what students were showing. B, the teacher did not care about what the narrator was showing. C, the teacher did not approve of what the narrator showed. D, the teacher liked what the narrator was showing to the class. Okay, try to use some um strategies to eliminate what you can number four how did the narrator most likely feel about the other kids in his or her fourth grade class a the narrator did not care what the other kids in class thought about him or her b the narrator did not feel accepted by the other kids in the class c the narrator thought he or she was cooler than the other kids in the class D, the narrator thought the other kids in the class were nice and friendly. Again, we can use 
the process of elimination and eliminate at least one or two choices. Which one is the best if you need to go back to the passage and find where it shows that how the narrator feels about the other fourth grade classmates. Okay, main idea. What is it mostly about? What is the main idea of this text? A, a student had to go to a train trestle to find fun and interesting things to share with his or her class. B, a student was disappointed when the music unit in class did not involve playing tubas or electric guitar. C, a student did not own any CDs and had to go to his or her neighbor to borrow one for show and tell. D, a student felt annoyed and embarrassed whenever he or she shared something during show and tell. There is one that makes the most sense and is supported by text evidence. So you have to go back to the passage, please. It will be mentioned multiple times when we're looking for the main idea. Number six, read the paragraph from the text. Sure, we had a little radio, but since mom was usually balancing her budget to be able to afford cans of chickpeas, we seldom spent money on CDs. I knew of some bands from listening to the radio and I had a few favorites based on songs my neighborhood friend and I played from his family's collection. But mom and I did not own any music I could bring in for show and tell. Why might the author have included this, this detail about affording cans of chickpeas in this paragraph? A, to show that the narrator's mother did not think show and tell was important. B, to imply that the narrator's family cared more about music than it does about food. C, to hint that the narrator's family did not have extra money or D, to suggest that the narrator thought his or her mom was mean for not buying CDs. Choose the answer number seven that best completes the sentence. Blank, the narrator thought show and tell was annoying. He or she still had to participate in. Is it A, for instance, the narrator thought show and tell was annoying. He or she still had to participate in it. B, even though the narrator thought the sh that, I'm sorry, even though the narrator thought show and tell was annoying, he or she still had to participate in it. C, in contrast, the narrator thought show and tell was annoying, he or she still had to participate in it. Or D, in, par in particular, the narrator thought show and tell was annoying, he or she still had to participate in it. Okay, read the sentence with the choices and see which one sounds correct and double check. Number eight, what, and this is a written response. So get your pencils or your typing fingers ready. What did the narrator's classmates do when the narrator played his or her favorite song at show and tell? Give at least two details from the text in your answer. You have to go back to the story. What did the narrator's classmates do when the narrator played his or her favorite song? So I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna tell you. There is a lot of evidence to support what was happening when the narrator played his song. Okay, it is all right here, okay? During the time that the narrator played the song, some kids whispered. They said, my parents listened to this. Someone said, this is so old. They were laughing. Um, and how does they were feeling, okay? They looked bored, confused, and they were giggling. These right here, you are going to find your evidence, okay? So let me clear this. Make sure you are responding in a complete sentence so you're not just going to write. Kids were laughing. Okay. 
seconds. We're laughing. This does not get you your full points and all of you know, don't do that. That is not a complete sentence. We are going to turn around what it is asking. So it's asking, what did the narrator's classmates do? So something like, um, when the narrator played their favorite song for show and tell, kids were blank, 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 blank. Someone said, and then put it in quotes. A student said, this song is so old. Okay, two details from the text. Okay, so we need to turn it around and give a complete statement and then fill in the blanks with two details from the text. You do not make this answer up. You have to go back to the passage. Number nine, how did the narrator feel about the other students' reactions to his or her favorite song? Use evidence from the text to support your answer. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna show you around that same place so we can get the evidence. Let me just turn on the annotate. Okay. My head got really hot. I knew I was blushing. They made it clear I wasn't part of the in crowd. I slumped at my desk, hating the fact I had no music at home. And I thought that I thought the song that was cool, the kids really thought was an antique. Any of this, give me two pieces of evidence that show how the narrator was feeling during the time they were playing their song for show and tell. You can also please turn this around as well and make it a complete sentence. The narrator feels blank. Okay. The students reactions to the narrators show and tell was blank and the narrator felt blank. And then you are going to provide your evidence. These are some examples on how to get your um, passage, your written response started. And the last one, why did the narrator want to do well during show and tell? Use evidence to support your answer. This has to do with tying it all together, how the narrator feels, where they're coming from, that, that they do not have a lot of money and a lot of new things. So why did the narrator want to do well? Again, we have to use evidence. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna show you a few places where you might be able to get that. Okay. Annotate this. Okay, here we go. Here's a great piece of evidence. I ran home that day excited about the idea of standing in front of my class the next morning and equal at last. So this has to do with main idea and theme that the narrator does not feel equal. They thought that all sorts of different people could like the same song. And the narrator even mentioned later Scroll down here about being part of the in crowd. Okay. Um, let me just clear the annotate. Okay. So this one is going to require a little bit more thought, a little bit more of your details, and then, of course, you have to provide your evidence. So again, you need to turn around that question and come up with a complete statement to start your 
written response, okay? Why did the narrator want to do well during show and tell? Okay, we might be able to say, the narrator wanted to do well during show and tell because, and give me a reason, the text states, and then you can give your textual evidence. Uh, the narrator ran home. I'm sorry, you're gonna have to go back to the very beginning to find it quote for quote, quote or you can paraphrase the text states that the narrator ran home and was excited to be an equal, okay, along the same lines. But after you tell me how the narrator felt, you're gonna give evidence from the passage to support your answer. You wanna give as much evidence as you can, so don't just stop at one. It doesn't say at least two, okay? Don't write a book, but definitely support and justify how the narrator feels and how you know that they want to do well, okay? So textual evidence is so important. Rereading is important. Highlighting is important. Main idea and theme are so important. And I just wanted to come on and record a little lesson to help you review this. Of course, I am more than happy. Sorry, I just wanted to clear that. More than happy to help you with this, but I feel like I've given you a great start. Everything was read. I gave you some ideas on how to start and I, we should see between Mr. Yoder, Ms. Renna, Mr. Roden, myself, we should see 100% participation because once this goes up next to the assignment, there really is no excuse why you shouldn't be able to follow along and use some of the strategies and little helpful tidbits. All right, eighth grade, I will see you in class. I hope you have a great day. Thank you, thank you. And remember, we should be asking ourselves with everything that we're reading now, watching, listening to if it's music, ask ourselves what the main idea is and what the theme is and be able to explain the difference. Have a great day.